So in this part we are going to focus on how we can actually play a video inside Unity so we can create cutscenes. Uh, before you start on this tutorial it's very important that you have installed QuickTime um, and you can get QuickTime just by going to Google and write uh, download QuickTime because Unity's uh, video playing is based on uh, Apple's QuickTime player. Because if you don't have that QuickTime installed well then you can't um, import those videos and make them uh, visible inside Unity. So first of all, we need to import our video. And after you have installed QuickTime, you can import these videos. And it's also important that you reopen Unity after you have installed QuickTime and that you don't import your video into your scene until QuickTime is installed, else it's not gonna work. So I'm gonna create a new folder here by right-clicking, pressing Create, and then I'm gonna call this uh, Movies, something like that. Open the folder and then drag your movie from outside Unity into the folder. When Unity is done importing this and if QuickTime is installed you'll see this little play icon here on um, on your movie. So uh, if you click on the movie you can see that there is this quality up here if you click on the um, movie in the inspector and you can actually change the quality and the higher the quality goes the more um, space it's of course going to take up um, so the more space on your hard drive it's going to use so if we set the quality all the way down you'll see that it only takes 238 kilobytes but if you move it all the way to the maximum quality of 1 you'll see that it will be 12 megabytes instead so this is a trade-off of course um, I'm just going to go with quality 1 and remember to click apply when you're done When this has been applied, we can start uh, playing our cutscene. So, I only want to play my cutscene in scene 2. So, I'm going to go to my scene and level 2. And this is where I want to play the cutscene. So, I need to access this new movie from within my script. So, reopen your script. And then you need to go to the top of your level handler script here. And you need to add um, the ability to reach a reference to that movie so that you can play it from within the script and to do this we need to access something called a movie texture because a movie texture is what you need to use to play a video inside unity so make a public movie texture and call it movie texture okay so usually you would li like a cutscene to play whenever your late level is loaded um, you can also just do it in the middle of a level or something, but I'm just going to show you how you can play this whenever your level starts so that you'll get a cutscene that shows you what to do in the level or something like that. So go to your awake function and after you've started fading and everything, you can say if movie texture isn't null. So if it exists, then we want to do it so in this way we can create levels without um, without movie textures and without videos and, and they're only going to be played if your level has a, um, a movie texture applied to it so if my movie texture isn't null well then I'm gonna say movie texture that play as simple as that then I'm gonna play my movie texture so right now if I save this and go into unity um, go to my level handler and drag my movie texture from my um, pretty f uh, from my from my folder here, my movies folder into here, and I play my game. Nothing is really gonna happen because I'm not drawing it onto the screen yet. I'm just playing my movie. So what I actually need to do is to go back into my script, and then I can go all the way down in the bottom and write void on GUI and this function handles the Unity UI and it's down here I need to make sure to sh that my movie is showing and I want to show it in full screen so I'm gonna make an if statement that says if movie texture 
isn't null, so we are only going to try to play it if it exists. And movie texture is playing. So if it is playing, well then I'm going to show it. If it's not playing, well then I don't need to show it at all. Then I'm going to say GUI, draw texture, and I'm going to make a new rectangle. It's going to start in position 0, 0.0, and it's going to be my screen dot width, comma screen dot height. So I'm going to make a texture that has the same size as my screen. I'll zoom in so you can see it a little better. Um, and then I'm going to say movie texture dot scale mode here. And I'm just going to scale to fill now it's going to scale so it fits the screen so usually you would always record your cutscenes in the same ratio as your game um, setup as, as your game resolution but right now this might stretch because I recorded it inside unity and everything but usually you should just record it in a high quality and here I give it give it the movie texture so that um, this draw GUI on the screen knows what texture it needs to draw so if we save this and go back into Unity and play our level, you'll see that the cutscene is playing now. And this is the cutscene I showed you in the intro, where I'm just pushing around some boxes here in my level. And as you can see, it's a little stretched because it, it's a wrong format though. And when it's done, um, I can start moving around in the game. So. Um, I want to be able to press escape to cancel my cutscene because usually uh, not everyone wants to see all these cutscenes so I'm going to go back into my script and I'm going to go to update and say if input that get key up equals key code dot escape there it is then I'm going to say screen dot full screen false and movie texture dot stop to stop playing and we might as well put full screen on here so we can say screen dot full screen equals true so if I jump back into unity to play my game then I should be able to escape the cutscene by pressing escape so if I press escape now, yes, the cutscene is cancelled and I have my game up and running here. So that's how we can play an actual video inside a Unity project and use it as a cutscene. But often you have audio connected to your cutscenes and right now we're not playing any audio. Um, but we want to fix that because if you click on your cutscene here and click the little arrow to expand it, you'll see that it also imports the audio connected to the video clip and this audio can also be played from within Unity. But we need to handle this by adding an audio source to our level handler so that the level handler also has a way of handling our audio. And this audio can actually be played in sync with the video clip itself. So if you click on the level handler here and go to add component and search for audio then you'll find this audio source. And this audio source is going to contain the clip that is connected to our cutscene. So we could either take the audio every time we add a new cutscene and add it here from our inspector or we can do it from our code and I'm going to do it from within the code so that it will always fit the correct cutscene whenever we play our game. So jump back into your script and up here in your level handler you're going to make a private audio source and call it audio source. When you've added that, you save your script and then you need to go to your awake function. So down here we need to make a reference from this audio source to the audio source sitting on the game object. So we're going to say audio source equals get component audio source. So this line of code basically takes this audio source here sitting on the level handler and it gives the script a reference to it so that you can always access it. Down here we need to set the clip of the audio source and we can do that by saying audio source dot clip equals movie texture dot audio clip. 
So here we take the audio clip sitting on the movie texture and we actually add it to this slot here. So if we would save uh, the script here and play our game, you'll see that there's actually an, a cutscene audio here attached to it now because we just did that from our code. So right now we're not playing it, but we need to play it by saying audio source the play and we also need to stop it so in our update function we are pressing escape we need to say audio source dot stop and that's it now you can play your audio synchronized with your video so I don't have any audio on this clip but you can test your own clip and see that whenever you play your game now it should play the audio source connected to your uh, video at all times and it's synchronized and when you press the escape button it just stopped playing the audio. So that's it for this little tutorial series for now at least. Um, if you have any suggestions or requests or questions, please post them in the um, comment section below. Um, as usual, if you want to support me, please do that by either buying one of my projects or becoming a Patreon. If you become a Patreon, then you can get every single project and every single asset I've ever made for just $5 a month which means that if I make a new project you also have them available to you just to free download if you if you uh, support me with those five dollars so thank you very much for watching